I wish I had more of these dreams. I had one dream. I woke up so happy. It was so real. I remember being in the kitchen, and all of a sudden, I smelled broccoli that I took out of the fridge. It was just so real, and when I woke up, I was happy. My friends would say things, like we'd be near a movie theater, and they would say, I smell popcorn. And I actually had no idea that what they were saying related to something they were taking in through their senses from the environment. Brian, the train to work in the morning, the train's pretty crowded, so you're, you're really close to the person next to you. There's some older woman, her hair was inches from my face, it was touching my face, and I was just grateful that I, I couldn't smell what her hair might have smelled like. I went on believing for so many years that I had a sense of smell, that I had to learn how to use it. It wasn't until at least midway through elementary school that I said, okay, this is a real thing that I can't do. My father can't smell. I have an uncle who can't smell. My grandfather can't smell. I just sort of assumed that I would not have a sense of smell. My earliest memories are my mother sitting down with me with scratch and sniff books, and I always just remember thinking, okay, everything just smells the same. As I was working in the kitchen, everything was about smell. It was the smell of veal stock bubbling on the stove. It was the smell of butter melting in the pan. Uh, smell gave flavor to all of the different ingredients I was working with. Without a sense of smell, eating for me became like my world had faded from color to black and white. I understand it's very common for people without a sense of smell to not be able to taste. but. That's not the case with me. I have a very vivid sense of taste. I can taste, I have true taste, which is bitter, sweet, salty, sour, but I don't taste flavors. So, um, you know, between two bowls of ice cream, I'm not gonna be able to tell which is vanilla and which is chocolate. If it's a really intense thing right in my nose, like for example, going to the dentist and having nitrous oxide, <laughs> I feel like I smell that. It's like a really yummy thing to eat like yummy chocolate ice cream, but it sort of fills up your whole head. So there was one time in Seattle, there was a rose and I concentrated very, very, very hard and I got a faint whiff of it. And that was probably the only time in my life that I've ever smelled anything. I went for a jog one morning in August. It was early in the morning, it was raining. They were playing movies in the park. It was the summertime. They were supposed to play Wayne's World that night and it got rained out. I was on my way home a few blocks from home, and I was hit by a car. So it was nighttime, I had, had my lights, everything on my bike. The guy opened his car door without looking, and I went flying. I don't remember when I was flipped up onto the windshield and fractured the back of my skull, or when I was flipped out onto the ground. I just remember waking up in the hospital with needles in my arm. So what's going on? And they told me you got hit by a car. I went online, started searching, you know, loss of smell, head injury. It's just such a thing. I didn't even know it existed. My life is totally different now. There was a smell always, constantly around me. It smelled a little bit like a garden without the flowers. I just figured, you know, based on the shape of my nose and the direction of smell, that it was probably smelling my brain. And, and I, I liked it because it was a smell. I would later learn that this was something called a, a phantom smell, and they're incredibly common with people who lose their sense of smell. You can tell each season with the smell in the air and everything, and I don't get that anymore, so. I lost my sense of smell, and because of that, I am very thankful that I was able to find that I had a olfactory groove meningioma, which is a brain tumor um, around the olfactory bulb, and was able to get it removed and taken care of. The scent of my, like, of my children, you can tell them apart from any, any other kid, and it's really a bonding thing, and it's like I've had to, like, you only know, touch her more and hug her more and all that, so. There are things that people just can't describe to you. I'd really love to know, you know, what my wife smells like, what my son smells like. I, I think he smells sweet and, um, 
you know, like a kid, I, I just, I wish I knew. I wish I could smell when kids pass gas so that I know what other people are making such a fuss about. I think it like sort of stings the inside of your nose, sort of. There's this new car smell that everyone talks about and they can't describe it. My baby, I like to smell my baby. I hear new babies smell really nice. Barbecue, uh, the grass. People will come into my room and they'll say, oh, this smells just like you. And I, I don't really get that. I've heard people say, it smells like it's gonna rain. Um, I just don't, I can't understand how it can smell like the weather. Winter time was, was always, a, the, the fireplaces on my block back home, uh, was always a good smell growing up as a kid. I know the summer's gonna come up and there's gonna be barbecues, that's something I'm gonna miss too. Just good times, I linked with, with certain smells. I realized that I was picking up a smell, then it clicked and I'm like, oh my gosh, that's the exhaust and gas fumes from the bus. It was like someone, you know, cracked open the window and, you know, I had that little bit of hope back. I was helping my mother to cook dinner because I couldn't stay away from the kitchen. And I had a sprig of fresh rosemary, the herb, and all of a sudden this smell hit me out of the blue, this one singular smell. And at first I didn't know what it was because it was so strong and so potent and felt like it completely took over my brain. I forgot that smell could be that strong. Even if I take a shower and I put cream on it, perfume and I want to smell like a woman it it's just missing and I do isolate a lot more now because I feel safer just being with myself people get angry at me Phil you should be really upset that you can't smell you should work on this and rehabilitate it but for me it's a non-issue uh, it's something that I've been curious about and always kind of uh, wondered just because it is attached to memories so much that I'm wondering what I'm missing out on if, like, let's say on a bus something smells bad because some kid had something bad in their lunch and everybody's, like, gagging and I'm just sitting back and so it makes me feel kind of special. There's been research done, 10,000 flavors that I will never know. And that's, you know, 10,000 conversations I'll never have. So there was this old guy at work and he was a close talker and I always try to avoid him whenever I could, but he's just a nice guy, you know, his, his breath was terrible. And, no, it does, doesn't bother me anymore. We're, we're cool now. Smell is linked to some of the most important parts of our lives. It's linked to our memories. It's linked to our childhood. It's linked to our past. It says a lot about what we eat, how we choose to eat, uh, where we like to go, what we like to put on our skin. It brings us closer to people. It makes us recognize the people that we love. It's complicated, and it's not completely understood by the scientific community. But we do know that it begins with a molecule, and there are many different stops and signals along the way.